Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 58. In the show, Humble Indie Bundle, Sysadmin Day, and how not to pull a face while diving. Thank you for watching or listening or whatever you're doing. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 58. Uh, with us tonight, we have Stuart. Who How's it? You can tweet at uh, Stu underscore ZA. That is correct, yes. Uh, Jan Vermeulen from My Broadband. Hi there. Uh, Jan V ZA. Excellent. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Tim's been practicing. I have. Okay. <laughs> uh, mixing, we have Johan Els. So that's Johan underscore Els. Uh, we, we almost had the mixer again, but we, we'll see apparently next week maybe. Uh, and then myself, Tim Hawk, uh, Tim underscore <laughs> Hawk at, at Twitter. Okay, let's try that again. At Tim underscore Hawk. Y- yeah, I'm slightly dyslexic, so. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, events <laughs> that are going to be going on. Uh, only one we have at the moment is the fact that it is Sys Admin, Sys, Sys admin Day. Yep, Friday. So if you are a Sys Admin. Or you know a Sys Admin. I hope you're being uh, treated nicely this Friday. Mm. Now, on Secretary Day, secretaries get given all kinds of nice things. I, I, I don't know what, like chocolate, whatever. Yeah. Um, so what would you give your sis Yeah, what would you, Beer. Beer. Beer is good. Android. Ferraris. Android. Gadgetries. Gadgetry. Yeah. Android. Yeah. And something with Ferraris. An Android in it. <laughs> oh, a little Android. Yeah, there's lots of things. Ferraris. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you wouldn't complain about a Ferrari. Transformer. <laughs> It reminds me of some of a joke, you know, they said, you know, this, this, these new Aces Transformers are, are not really good. He took it, he threw it up in the air, and it didn't become anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did he catch it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, we're going to go into our topics. Um, can we just go back to that subject? Um, so yes. w- w- no, 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 on the Aces Transformers. Okay. In case anybody hasn't yet watched that video, um, just go look at it on... Um, cool. And apparently, Hawkeyes is going to be doing another recording tomorrow night. Is he He's got a phone. No, that means I'm not getting the phone back to return. <laughs> okay, well, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> By the way, you're not getting the phone back tomorrow because you're going to do a recording of it Excellent. tomorrow night. What phone is it? I can't remember. <laughs> it's a Nokia E6. Oh, okay. Any hints? Uh, a there? what? Nokia E6. It's running the new Symbian Anna. Yes, that's that new social network. Yeah, um, uh, look, so. he, he reviewed it, but just on a brief glance at the phone, it looks like they've done, they've done some pretty good work. Uh, you know, with Symbian, it, it's really how Symbian maybe should have launched. For instance, on the on the Nokia N8, when you su- when you swipe sideways to move to the next yeah. home screen, yeah. there's a delay, and so the Nokia fanboys on the forum were naturally calling me out for no, for, for for saying this, um, bec- you know, because this is actually a feature, not a bug. Um, the reason How's that a feature? the reason is so that you can side swipe on widgets on the home screen. So. Um, the widgets on the home screen not only scroll up and down, they scroll sideways as well, right? Somehow, on in Symbian Anna, they managed to make the home screen swiping, you know, so that it swipes smoothly like you would expect it to on a smartphone and have sideways swiping on the home screens. Because so I must say that's one of the, the things that I actually liked, I have not liked about previous Androids, and I'm an Android fanboy, and I really like about the Asus is it's got s- the Asus is smooth swiping. So when you swipe across, it's the one thing the iPad has always had. Okay. Okay, you haven't. I haven't noticed that. And yeah, I, I don't own anything bigger than my phone. So. Okay, well you don't really notice it until you yeah. like have had the, That's uh, the iPad yeah. and, and in, the thing, and you just. It in in fairness, the iPad swiping is really just between menus. It, yeah, there's yeah. no home screen with complex widgets and stuff on it. So I say, it's just, just an, a list of icons. Still keep on looking for the exit button on the apps. <laughs> I saw for all the time I've used oh. it, I'm, I'm not used to yeah, pushing just, the square button to yeah, exit. Yeah. It just, it doesn't work for me. Anyway. Talking about other cool things that are coming out or are out at the moment now, we the uh, hum, in, humble indie bundle. I know we talked about the previous ones. Yeah, I know Stu's quite excited about this one. And hey, I, there were some cool games on there. And I think it's even possibly bought this one. No, I haven't bought it yet. Okay, long story. Do you want? Are you looking but at? I, the st- I am going to buy it soon. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking at the stats of actually the, the yeah, breakdown yeah. about who's bought it. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, so they've got some some quite funky games. That Crayon Physics Deluxe looks pretty cool. Actually, can, we, can I just come back one step? What are we talking about? Is it, is it this website? Yes, the Humble yes. Indie Bundle. Humble is Indie this, Bundle uh, Three. Is this Humble Indie Bundle Three? Yep. 
So what is this about? Okay, is that on the video now? Yes. Okay, okay. excellent. So what it is, is they're going to bundle a whole bunch of games. Uh, five games, I think it is. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. Sorry, five games and you can donate to two charities. Yeah. Okay. EFF is, I mean, it's not South African, but these guys, you know, look out for, for, for the for, rights. For the rights of, of, the, of the common man on the internet. So you can, you can buy five games and sponsor two charities for whatever you'd like. And uh, you, can, you can choose any way between a custom amount or they've got some set amounts with some set breakdowns, etc. So, uh, so far, it's quite interesting. The, they've made uh, just over half a million dollars. Well, purchased uh, payments, total payments. And it comes to about 110,000 purchases. Cool. And the breakdown is Windows is $3.83. <coughs> and that's an improvement from over the last time. And um, your average Mac user will pay $6.34. And your average Linux user, $11.01. That's so that's, it's, almost, <laughs> it's almost double the Mac user and you know, four times the, the Windows user. Because we, we never get love with games. And finally, here's one that all the games play in Linux. Yes, yeah. That's uh, one of the things. It's com all completely cross-platform, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So. And I must say, the games actually look pretty cool. You must actually, if you can get time, uh, is go to the website and watch the video. Yeah. Because actually go through all the games, and it's actually quite a, quite a fun video to watch. No, there's some, there's some really, there's some funky games. As I said, I looked at the, the Crown Physics looks pretty cool. That's the one I thought was quite nice. What I really liked about the previous Humble Indie Bundles is that they, um, they give you a code and then you can actually put it into Steam. Oh, no, this does the same. Yes. Yep. So, so, and so it's completely cross-platform. You can plug it into, uh, so uh, in terms of um, operating system platforms, then you can still plug it into other people's platforms like Steam and download it through there. So you've got your achievements and your Steam friends list and all, all that, that stuff junk, yeah. hooked into it. I see they support Steam and uh, Desura. Oh, I've never used that. No, but I've, I've never even heard of it. Yeah. yeah, the Desura support they've had at least since the Humble Indie Bundle 2. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so there we go. So check it out. You have 13 days, uh, 5 hours, 11 minutes, and 5 seconds to uh, purchase this lot. Will this work on an iPad? I'm just, I doubt it. No, no. Uh, a lot of these nice. games don't None work of these on games iPad. support an iPad. It's only those three things, <coughs> those three platforms. Yeah, they're PC games. Yeah. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's 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 quite good fun. I'm still enjoying uh, Space Chem, which is lots of fun. Space Chem is such addictive. an intensive game. No. Oh, so I have played the Crayon Physics game that they've got there, but yes, not, so. not the deluxe version. Oh, they had like a free version, and? and it was actually pretty cool because you know you draw the shape, and then, and then it suddenly has weight and it falls and it does bounces and different moves different things. And, yeah. and depending on what shapes you draw, you can get them to do different things. Yeah, and, and you can draw like little pivot points and hook things together and that. No, it looked quite cool. Cool. All right, uh, and from there into cheap things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that cheap enough? Well, Pay ADS what you want. ADSL top-up specials uh, from Amphrey House again. Seems to be one a week. Uh, I think last week, uh, unless my memory is failing me, it might have been the week before, uh, they launched a one rand steal this yes. broadband deal or whatever, um, where you could pay one rand and get any package you want. I have seen they did okay on on a side note that when they've they've like re-released because I got an email from them because I actually do use yeah, them. Yeah, I got that as well. Um, and you can now get the 50 or at that time the 50 gig for one round. It actually worked out. Don't ask me why, but it, 10 gigs for the rest of the month for one round. Mm. Um, but now they're also doing top ups three rand for per gig. That's nice and cheap. Yes. So isn't there a bigger story around Afrios that got out today? Who are they buying? They're planning to buy Axis. The biggest competitor. Yes. yes. Uh, Access and Afrios both sell product on, uh, on IS's network. I mean, Afrios has a slightly different setup, um, I think. Uh, you know, the, they, they run some of their own stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they both basically resell Access's, uh, 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 IS's stuff with maybe, you know, if you request that they'll put you on sex. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I must say, the only reason I didn't put this in is I didn't have time to read it properly. But as far as I gather, uh, Access has got about 30,000 subscribers. Uh, where Afri hosts is about 50,000. Um, now, I don't know sure if it's an out of bio or amalgamation or something. You know, I, I don't know. Um, but that's going to give them, you know, 80,000 people. So once again, with all these things, the more people you have, the more bandwidth. First of all, it increases your buying power. So you can get bandwidth cheaper. 
but then also your oversell ratios and stuff improve considerably. So it becomes far, far more economically viable to do a lot of these things. Mm. I know this is um, something, uh, just something we discussed in the office, is apparently this is something that has been called for by um, uh, Web Africa's CEO, Matthew Tagg, for quite some time in order to, to, to build a sort of ISP, uh, what, I, what seems to be an ISP powerhouse, exactly because of that mm -hmm. negotiation power. Um, and, and maybe to do what MWeb has done, uh, to be able to go, we do not pay for peering anymore. And that you can, you can only really lay down the law like that when you're big enough. Mm. But this is very cool. I'm glad this is happening and it's going to add more competition into when South Africa. When are the, when are the mobile operators? Because this is now three, okay, three rand a gig. It's two rand a meg out of contract on, on a mobile On network. a mobile phone. So it's what, a thousand, nearly a thousand times cheaper. Yeah. And, when are the and mobile networks going to come and, and play And the ball? chances are that's never, um, the, the, the normal out of bundle yeah. rate will never drop. Yeah. But, but they have dropped the know. out of bundle rate when you bought a bundle. So if you just buy, for instance, an eight, an eight meg bundle on Vodacom, you get one rand out of bundle. Like your, your out of bundle rate halves than if you were just to buy ad hoc. So you've got what, what we call ad hoc out of bundle and then you've got, you know, normal out of bundle. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> just, just putting it out I there. Think, I think the more <laughs> we just say it, the better. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah, yeah. just keep but saying look, it. I must say the mobile operators are actually still doing quite a bit. You know, you've got Aters 10 gig, you've got Cell C, they're, they're, sorry, yeah, they, they've also no, got 10 true. gig, 20 10 gig, gig. No, fair enough, gig. fair enough. I'm just saying, I know, it's, I know it's completely different technology and all the rest, and there's lots of reasons why, but just interesting. <laughs> because there isn't enough competition there yet. Yeah, that's the big point. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. As soon as there's enough competition. And, it'll, and it'll we're seeing uh, like a, a rise in competition with the likes of ATA and Celsi. I mean, they're not competing with the big guys just yet, um, but it's good to see that sort of... Uh, un until they get to a point where they've got the coverage and they've got the subscribers. I see Cell, sorry, I saw an ad for Celsi. I see they offer if you're on contract with them and your phone breaks, they get you a replacement phone while you're waiting for it repaired. Really? That was pretty cool. Indeed, if, if that actually does happen. Oh, no, true. I, yeah. was, I just saw the ad for it. It was yeah. quite interesting. Oh, well, if there's an ad for it, they have to be held because, accountable. Um, it, so. That's oh, cool. Gents, That's a cool offer. Just Sorry, I was actually trying because my broadband, our favorite website, <laughs> ran a story in this week again about comparing all the, all the broadband prices. Uh, the mobile broadband prices? Yes. That would be me. Was it you? Mm. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> but look at what I found. This story from a year ago, 1st of September 2010. SM Mobile pricing comparison. Look at these figures. Yo, okay, it's, it's dropped. Cons that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it's dropped a scary amount from a year ago. Um, Five gigs a month. That was when Celsi just introduced their specials, I think. I mean, the, the, this, this is the story we ran just after Celsi launched their. So effectively. Launched their specials. They're, they're two gig you guys remember it? They two, yeah. It yeah. shook up the industry? Yeah, we ran this comparison. Cool. I mean, this is a year ago. I mean, okay, the landscape is changing, Stuart. Yeah, no, uh, Well, true. look, put this way. If you really want to change the landscape, join your local WUG. Expand the WUG. <laughs> there we the go. Yeah. That's my theory. You know, we want WUG everywhere, uh, which means there's ubiquitous wireless bandwidth. Yeah. And then there's a huge competition to everybody else. It's just such a pity we can't get hold of some WAMAX equipment and legally. Uh, and imagine, imagine yeah. the WAG. Oh, that would be so cool Imagine the WAG you get, you get an ICNS license, you get yourself some, some IPC, and uh, it would be cool. I, I don't <laughs> see it happening. It's too much. That, that's a <laughs> lot of work. I think JWAG is actually looking into that. Yeah. So we'll see if they actually okay. get it and, and what they do with that. That's interesting. Um, I know they're also playing with IPv6. So that's a whole, they've got a whole plan. I actually mean to chat to them at some point. Yeah, but should very get them on the free show. time. Yes. Really should get them on the show. Um, um, just so you guys know, sorry, apparently uh, when we bring up the browser window, it's, it's not legible. I don't know what's going on there. If it's maybe just a it, zooming it, issue. We, are str uh, we stream out at quite a low rate. Okay. Um, and just due to uh, the amount of people with bandwidth in this country, we'd rather stream out at a rate that the most amount of people can see it. Sure. What I would then say, if you're really interested to see the screenshot, just download our show. Yes. You yeah. can find it on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, we're on YouTube, iTunes, uh, LTG. <laughs> Let's talk network to TV, uh, iTunes, Pirate Bay, uh, <laughs> another local torrent server who, who I who shall, shall not name. be unnamed. Um, <laughs> oh, they're still fight clubbing. All right. Yes, <laughs> but we are. We distribute everywhere. And if you're really, really stuck, feedback at Let's Talk Network TV, and we will make a plan to get it to you. Send us a send us a, um, a an envelope with some stamps in it and a CD, and we'll write the shows for you <laughs> and mail it back to you. Yeah, <laughs> would you do that? A CD. A CD. 
Okay. Well, it depends how many shows. If you want lots of shows, DVD. Yeah, DVD. I mean, that's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. DVDs, <laughs> 32 gig flash drives. Those all are accepted as well. All gig flash drives. It, and in fact, if it comes back as a 16, <laughs> yeah, we did some compression. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving it along. Uh, anyway. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Moving right along from Schlein to our poor listeners. Um, just to come back here. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll zoom in on the screenshot so that more people can see it on the live stream. Cool. All right. The next one, I just saw there were some things there that I meant to take away and didn't. Uh, is the fact that Microsoft have le- uh, released a themed Xbox. This is so cool. I really um, like it. It's Star Wars themed, so it's... Uh, yes. Star Wars themed what? Xbox what? 360. <laughs> throw, throw that thing up. Give me the link. Give me the link. Paste it into IRC. Uh, in the IRC right now. You can grab it. Uh, look, I must say I like it, but I, it's the comment that hurts me, I'll say I agree with them. I want the, the box to be more round. Oh, yes, no, um, I, I've actually, when I first saw it, I, I'm terribly sorry, Tim, I actually hadn't seen this one until uh, I heard about it, but I didn't see it. I thought it was a droid. I, I thought it was round like a freaking <laughs> droid. That's what I imagined as well when I first heard about it. I thought it, it was an R2-D2 and you would sit there and you'd feed CDs into it. Exactly. How awesome that would that would be? Cool. <laughs> Apparently somebody is actually, the, there's a schematics on how to build one. With also the projector, <laughs> so the, the bit where they would actually show Leia in the movie—that's that where they've got a projector in there. So you like put your Xbox in, and then it projects out the movie or whatever that, game you play. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, so if you want to go a bit further, you can. But apparently, you know, and I like the I like the gold controller too. I thought that was quite cool. It so is very cool. C three PO controller. So. Apparently, there are custom sounds, so it might sound like R two D two. That'd be cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, it's actually quite apt because I've been introducing my girlfriend over the last two weeks or so to the, the Star Wars series. And, yeah. She's so liking it? Oh, no, loves it. Oh, okay. So you no, don't no, have to no, dump no, loves it. Good. Loves it, loves it. Yeah, no. That's, she's safe. <laughs> 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 but we did it. We, we started it in, uh, chrono- in, you know, as they came out in chrono- that chronological yes, no, you've got to watch it. That so you've got to watch four, five, and six. Absolutely. First. One was seriously disappointing. <laughs> I watched it again. That damn Jar Jar. Yes. Jar Jar Binks. Oh, if, you, if I ever find that uh, you'd really want to throttle you can get, get ones where they've actually cut him out. Dude. He, is he, he that? He's just a character that's just y- yes, no, Apparently yes. it doesn't improve Do, the movie. Watch it. Watch it and you get angry. Really, really well, angry. What, what ruined it for me was midichlorians. Well, look, but this way. N- yeah. n- number three is what ruined it for me. You yeah, know? absolutely. But they don't explain why Darth Vader goes crazy. Just He goes crazy. He just goes crazy. It's like, you know, they could have said that, you know... Uh, he, the girl he loves gets killed and, and, and the people don't save her and that's why he hates Everything. everyone. Yeah. But no, he just, he's bad. You know, it's just, it's such bad writing. It is so, they, pay, they could have paid anybody to come up with a better story. And, yeah. and then, and then uh, like right after that, I, I think it, the, it just proved to me that the, that the director-producer combo I think didn't work because right after that, um, Old the Luke, old George Lucas and Steven Spielberg uh, yes. teamed up for another Indiana Jones movie, and they ruined that too. So. You've seen the South Park take on the Indiana Jones. Oh, that was <laughs> I haven't seen it. Watch it. It's a little bit too risque to mention on a show okay. where there might be children what, listening. Yes, but yeah, if you're over eighteen, do yourself a favor and watch that episode. It's it's a classic. It, it is right. indeed a classic. Well, since so we're talking about this, let's also talk about some other things that uh, big people have gone and made worse. And this is Apple. With the in-app purchases and demanding 30%. Oh, yeah. Okay. So basically, I know last night, Google, Amazon, all of them updated all the apps and they b- removed all in-app purchasing. Yes, I saw that. So wow. everyone has to now, you can't link from your app to your website or anything like that because you might be screwing Apple. Or, or you can, but then you've got to ha- provide in-app purchasing. We've got to provide 30% of everything that yes. you, you sell. How, how the hell are they going to even control that? What if I just have a link to my... Okay, no, fine. no, you can still go to your website and buy it. So like with you Amazon, you, you can go onto the Amazon site and yes. buy it. You just can't from inside the app make a link through. You know how you get around that, eh? You root your iPhone and yes. you use the rooted stores. Well, apparently, Jim. Um, <laughs> just don't buy an iPhone. Oh, just don't buy is, an is iPhone. Is she there in the so. chat room? Um, no, she's no, not she's there. No, she's not. Uh, yeah. We know somebody that recently yes. obtained an I- iPhone and is desperately wanting to get <laughs> rid of it. I don't know if it's <laughs> in the recording, but it was definitely interesting to hear it. So if you go to listen to the latest Let's Talk Afrikaans, I think, <laughs> yeah. you, can, you, you, can, you can hear that person talking about getting rid of, of the iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so but I know there's a lot of people complaining on the, the message boards and stuff about how this app's now broken and... How could these people do it? But slowly but surely, the people actually know are busy plussing the one that says Apple broke it. Yes, yeah. 
But it's uh, it's It'll be interesting to it's see. It's shocking, I think. Uh, oh, it's Apple I just had to go to that shot so that uh, our audience can just appreciate the fact that uh, actually two of the um, hosts have got apples in front of them. Yeah, I would like to just specify and clear clarify this. This is running, uh, running Arch Linux, it's Linux, and it's it, it's on running Linux, and it doesn't even boot into OS X. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I'd like to point out that mine isn't an iPhone. It's in <laughs> fact a PC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's as bad. So how's that lion doing it for you, <laughs> dude? Um, I, I told I told you I freaked out in the Let's Look Afrikaans IRC channel. Um, because it actually, by default, comes with autocorrect. There's a couple of defaults in Lion that I just don't understand. They, they've put in autocorrect, which is obviously a smartphone feature and, and yeah. makes a lot of sense on a smartphone. Yeah. And they've put in, and they change the way scrolling works. So it works like touch-based scrolling rather than, rather than mouse scrolling. So in other words, you would, if you scroll down, it'd be like you're pulling up. You know, what? like on a like on yeah, a smartphone, sure. right? Um, when I scroll down, when I swipe down, I want to scroll. I want to scroll page. down. But there are other apps where it kind of makes sense. Like when I'm in i when I'm in iCal, when I'm in the the Apple Calendar app, and you you sort of want to swipe, you know, the, the calendar that way. You want to page the page that way. You, then it feels like it has to scroll that way. Why they're doing that? Because soon screens. they're going to amalgamate iOS and. The, the basically the Mac one and the phone operating system will be one operating they system. They are one operating system. Okay, Fry is, is Mac like OS. We've got some comments here in the IRC. Fried roadkill. Yes, I, I started the conversation. I do apologize. Let's get off the Macs. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. <laughs> where, 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 where are Mac fans? Like, we've only been critical of Mac. Anyway. Oh, yes. no. All right. Well, okay, but, okay, I've got to give him one thing is nice hardware. That's yeah, I, I mean, I've got criticisms about the hardware, but it is some of the nicest laptop yeah. hardware. Apparently, it's still you want to run Windows the best ever loaded on a Mac. Yeah, it, <laughs> I just say it runs, <laughs> and, and the because all the hardware is identical across the range, your Linux support is brilliant on it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Because everyone has got the same network card. Everyone has got the same graphics card. There's no mixing and matching with one Toshiba is does is not the same. They're all flipping identical. You buy a MacBook Pro, it's all the same. Which helps a lot with uh, with kernel drivers and things like that. And and in closing, I do believe that the folks at Google, are, for various reasons, but they they tend to use Macs. They t they get a Mac and they slap Linux on it. No, yeah. cool. Okay. It's, unfortunately, we our next topic is also Macs. Oh, oh, man. No, no, no. Dun, no, dun, dun, no dun, come on. Dun, dun, dun. It's just the way it worked out. I'm do sorry. It. It's got to do with uh, how McDonald's actually inadvertently, or maybe it's more slams Windows. Because in McDonald's is how to join the Wi-Fi, yes. and they've got a big plot. And on on like the three page oh, fold out, how are two of the pages are how to connect your Wi-Fi hotspot in Windows. And I must say, in Windows, it's not always the most simple thing. <laughs> and then in Mac, it's like three three lines, and then yeah, done. okay, fair enough, fair enough. But for oh, Flip, I'm going to defend Windows XP now. XP. <laughs> Windows XP was easier than than Vista yes. and Seven though. Okay, bottom, but but this, bottom, okay. hidden half the stuff. All right, Tim, I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Right, Windows. Their thing here is um, the screenshots are quite large. First of all, there are five steps that they say you need to connect to a window, and there are three steps for a Mac. So yeah. yes, two more steps. Look, I must admit, it's it's not actually so bad. It's more more mockery of Windows because they have yeah. put in a whole bunch of stuff. And when stuff breaks, actually get into the networking things to to change it. Have you ever tried to sp talk someone who but it's doesn't way, know how it works? It's way on way a phone? way more complicated to do it in Vista than it was in XP. Yeah, I I, I no. don't actually. Um, I must say, look, uh, having having now used GNOME and um and KDE and OS X Lion and Windows. In as many like Windows in probably all its incarnations since 3.1. Yeah. Um, connecting to Wi Fi is incredibly easy on GNOME and Mac oh, OS yeah. X. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the stick in the mud because I'm the Windows fan. <laughs> um, and I've got the Azure image if anybody needs it. Um, <laughs> oh, that's how good a fan you are. If you were like a Mac fan, would go here's how to buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stuart, you were yes. saying I mean on the left hand side of that screen, sh and sorry for the guys who can't see it. There's four steps for XP and only three for Vista. In pictures, no, yes, one, but two, three, four, five. five. If you look at the text, there's five. Five. There's five steps. There's three figures, five steps. And actually, for Windows Vista, there's a couple extra steps further down. Yeah, and there's 
other crap that's been written. No, 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 there no, as no, well. no, no. On the right, that's that's five, five. Look at it, gents. What five? Okay, and from yes, here no, downwards, that's, what I that's said. fine. No, I said five. five. That's what I'm saying is there's not really that much of a difference. Okay, but why are they telling people to make sure that they've got obtained an IP address automatically activated? Because if they I come mean, there with their corporate laptops, they might have a static oh. IP set. Nobody puts a Mac on a corporate network. <laughs> I, I, I unfortunately disagree with you. I know, I know. Because, because we've had I respectfully with disagree with you. <laughs> in a lot of corporate networks, and until uh, about three years ago, the proxy settings in Macs were useless. Th this is always a fun bear to poke. It's like, hi, Tim, how are proxy settings in Mac these days? <laughs> They've improved. We don't get calls about them anymore. <laughs> they can do auto detect. It's yeah, lovely. Yeah, the, yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> let's move along. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that stuff. Uh, okay, into Mozilla. Uh, yeah, and this is quite cool. Yeah. yeah, I like this. They're planning to develop a mobile OS. Okay. Do we need another one? I mean, poor is Samsung is trying to push Bada. We well, still, we haven't, we haven't had our hands on Chrome OS. Is it really an OS? It's, it's, it's an OS that launches Chrome. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, no, 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 no. Listen, what they're saying, uh, yeah, is it a real OS? Or are they just taking the Linux kernel and slapped a UI on it? Well, they're taking the Android based system. Which is Linux. System, yeah. And they're basically, yeah, putting a browser. Well, okay, it. yes. So I've basic. I wrote one last week then, and I wrote my own phone OS last week. Well done. Cool. Mm. And, and before because I Because I rooted my phone again, and I upgraded it, so... Yeah. yeah. So that's why. I've, I've had, remember yeah. the Android uh, thing we had at... Um, CSR at the beginning of the year, I asked the guy, what's the difference between why are they still working on Chrome OS? It's Linux that boots into Chrome. Chrome, that's all mm. it is, yeah. So is this just going to be Linux booting into? Firefox. 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 Firefox that will run on your phone. You'll still be able to dial with it. You'll still be able to use it as a phone. And their whole thing is that they basically want to push forward HTML5 and that browsers get more powerful, which I'm actually quite proud of. No, it's, it's cool. And this I'm is something that Rim is also trying to do with its new operating system. Is the laying off half of their stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what I was about to say, yeah, how yeah. they're going to do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and apparently um, uh, BGR uh, has a rumor up. I mean, BGR has a lot of rumors up, but most of them tend to pan out. Um, that apparently they also lost their lead software architect at some point. At Rim. Yeah, uh, he all. left apparently. Um, so yeah, but we'll see how far things go. But their vision was to amalgamate the tablet and the and the phone OS. Well, and the tablet OS is really HTML5 JavaScript heavy. Uh, that's okay. its. Yeah, okay, so here's it's my question. Hmm? So much web OS. I haven't used web OS, okay. but so here's my question. I mean, Android's in trouble again about some patents, or it's not in trouble yet. It's, it's yeah. heading that way. Why don't these guys just actually build a phone that can run Linux? And Look, make and get GNOME and get GNOME and those yeah, guys are basically like and basically and like the Nokia Mamer. Well, well, but to say Android is effectively li is. Linux already. You, you think about the Java stuff further higher up in the stack. We're in talking about what Firefox is going to do. They're not going to take the Java side of it. They're basically just taking all the hardware support in the Android base system, yeah. so that it supports all the phones. So it's rapid development for them on that side. And then they can focus more on the actual the gooification, if you want to call but it. But it's pretty I mean, awesome because... Fried, Fried Roadkill is, is shouting at me, Android runs on Linux. I understand that. So what is, so what is Android effectively? It's just the, the GUI. It is. So the, it, it, they do hook down into the kernel in some places, but yes, it's mostly just your... your not just your UI, uh, but it's your UI and your phone services. Yeah, and drivers and all the rest of it. All the drivers so, okay. will sit in the kernel. The Android-flavored Linux they're going to take and put yeah. it onto a phone. And, and if you, uh, if I would, maybe this is an oversimplification, but the way I see this is Android is a, is a phone-based a phone -based Linux that runs Java platform. And what Mozilla is proposing is a phone Linux that runs Mozilla platform, yeah. well, which is C++ Gecko. placed. Gecko. And, and yeah. Also, also, all the places that uh, Android has actually been sued on is all further high up in the stack. So basically, they're taking all the stuff out that they're yeah. being sued about. Okay. And just putting their own GUI. Look, but I mean, there's laws their own GUI one. I don't know that. The simplification of this last lawsuit that's now going ahead about um, the way it picks up the phone numbers generally for, uh, throughout throughout the phone. Yeah, I missed that. I mean, the simplification of the current court case is the fact that when you're in an SMS, it actually recognizes a phone number and you can then click on phone it or wherever, anywhere in the OS. That, that Who is suing them for that? Apple. Apple. Okay, I would just like to state my Nokia 
Thank you. 3310 could do that. Yes, no, but apparently the patent was first brought in on the Apple Mac uh, PCs, and it is a couple. But it's like it's a concept. Evolved. How can I you agree? Uh, I'm not pro software patents. I'm not pro software patents. It's, it's really America has though accepted them. So unfortunately, that's the, the, the field that they're playing in. I know they're trying to push them into this country, which fortunately we don't. Uh, allows software patents mm. as yet in this country? Well, the patents, uh, I've chatted to some software. It's an article I haven't written yet, and they gave me comment last year already. It's a very tricky thing to write. Um, uh, but what what they explained to me is that the, the way the patent system works in South Africa is that you can patent anything. Yeah. Um, and, it is, and it's not vetted by the patent office at all. Um, so for a patent's veracity to be tested, it has to hit our courts. Our patent system works fundamentally differently to yeah. the US patent yeah. system, for instance. Yeah. And so these guys, but obviously they're, they're patent lawyers, so um, they, do, they would recommend that you patent everything because yeah. it, it, yes. it, it brings in uh, money. For it brings money. in money. I'm, I'm sure that they're not trying but, to but be... But then again, they're lawyer, not trying lawyers to be always err on the side of, of caution. caution. So I don't want to make them out to be profiteering gluttons, but they are, they, what, what they would say is that they don't have any case law to work with. And so in South Africa, software patents might turn out to be a big business. <laughs> uh, and, and if you haven't patented your software stuff, um, and it you might be losing out. You, know, you might lose out down the line, yeah. which is why they recommend just, just do it. It's not that expensive compared to elsewhere in the world, maybe. And, um, and nobody's checking them yeah. <laughs> yet. So yeah. just do it. Uh, anyway, but I think it's okay. Apart from bitching and moaning about what is an OS and is it, it's cool. Okay, the Git repository is available. You can go get it off GitHub. You can go mess with it, go muck with it, do whatever you want. That is that is the, yeah. that is cool. I, I mean, must say, what they said is they always they're going <coughs> to develop in the public. Yeah. So unlike Google, who goes away for a year and then comes, comes out, out and says, says here it is. Yes. All the development in public, you can always take all of it, and more competition. Is good. Oh no, of course, of no. course. And I mean, really, uh, they will, of course, they're going to have something novel in their OS, and it'll be something innovative, or s and 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 somebody will take it, and then they'll take from somebody else. And that's that's how these things yeah. develop at a far more rapid pace. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, Ubuntu is also trying to sort of push their way into the touchscreen space. They've yeah. they tried to do it with Netbook Remix. Um, they they've got. There's and always th been talk about their own tablet. And, and now there's Unity, yeah. um, which is an obvious an obvious take at. Yeah. Uh, at getting into the touch space. So, yeah, more competition, especially from Linux. It, it looks like, and it's interesting to me, sorry, we were on this topic, but like I've been doing a lot of historical mm -hmm. investigation into computing, uh, you know, just as a, as a sort of, just as a per, out of yeah. personal interest. And um, looking at the way the wheel is turned, because everybody, you know, thought that Microsoft was this powerhouse that would never be able to be unseated without government regulation and anti competitive lawsuits. And those anti competitive lawsuits have hurt them so much now that they have struggled to, that now oh, they're actually struggling to compete in things like the smartphone space um, so it's very interesting to see the way the wheel turns is that all of a sudden we are truly getting into the post PC era yeah. um, and uh, and it's not it's not Microsoft, Microsoft driven it is in fact Linux driven but Microsoft it's not so much they, they missed the boat yeah and they were in the boat for longer than anybody yeah. except for like palm yeah and he also dropped the ball <laughs> I like palm I had a palm VX and I really liked it who? <laughs> I had a I had a palm handspring. Yeah, but, thank but you. Who? <laughs> <laughs> the, the makers of WebOS. <laughs> <laughs> who? Yeah, who? who now? Like, yeah, okay, so, sorry. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, next one. Uh, I don't know who had this. ANC Youth League website gets hacked again. <laughs> oh, this was oh, no, this and, is and, so funny. And more than that is, I got I, oh. I I got I got in touch with a hacker. Um, Ooh, you got some details for us. Yes, yes. So it's all, it's all in the article. Um, okay. Very interesting. There's some stuff I can't give up. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, for... Yep, yes. Like yeah, his name. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I, that's, that's one thing we try to make clear. So... Um, you don't know. Th yeah. That, um, they haven't given us any personally identifying information. If the ANC Youth League or if um, the, the web hosts come to us with a subpoena... <laughs> You've for, got nothing for them. Uh, I can give them exactly what they've received because this, this hacker actually got in touch with a, the, the, the developer a hosting company called Unwembi. Um, Which is hosted on the same domain. If you go to ancyyouthleague.org slash whatever, that's their homepage. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that Very weird, but okay. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, Unwembi, um, so this hacker, after the hack, actually got in touch with Unwembi and helped them sort this stuff out, explain to them what they, you know, what they did, how they got in, how they can, you know, what they can do to patch it up. However, that this hacker, um, uh, he's actually been criticized by the original hacker as just a script kitty, which, which might not be entirely fair, but the hack was easy it, it yep. was a yeah. it was a, an h they, they basically injected um, code into PHP into the user agent string and it turns out that this is a vulnerability that was left by the previous hacker ah. um, so uh, y y everybody remembers the previous hacks they changed the image you know ha 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 16 million house uh, and before that they were you know he added an article uh, been uh, been yeah yes. pr plenty of hacks of this and so but it was really interesting to 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 get in touch with with uh, Monday's hacker this hacker uh, completely wiped out index.php and put dumb and dumber and put a dumb and dumber poster in there yeah with with zuma and and um julius, julius malema's faces you know replaced uh, replacing jim carrey you, you gotta say julius <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, yeah, they explained exactly how the hack went down, explained that it was a bit of an accident. You know, they were just poking around. Out of curiosity, I mean, they've seen the, ha the site get hacked so often, they wanted to see if they could do it. Yeah. And they came upon this, this vulnerability that was left by the previous hacker and inadvertently closed it. So I'm certain that the previous hacker isn't too happy I about it. I can imagine, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, but uh, I, I also have it on fairly good authority that um, the hacking is not over. Um, and that this the, the, this one vulnerability being closed is is not it all is the vulnerabilities. Yeah, oh, it's okay. not all of the vulnerabilities that were introduced. I like that but they jump to the first thing. It's white right wings that are hacking their website. Yeah, and straight up. And both <laughs> and, yeah, and both hackers. The, um, that's Monday's hacker and the the hacker that's taken responsibility for the previous hacks have said categorically that's not the case. The yeah. the Monday hacker said it was just curiosity and and uh, like doing the hack during the press conference where the ANC Youth League is yes. trying to explain away Julius Malema's <laughs> trust fund yeah. was, was a stupid mistake. <laughs> he, said, he, he said that he really didn't want to do that. Um, and, but the previous hacker, their, um, their motivation, they say, is um, uh, you know, that they, they want to get some. It's all on, the, on this guy's Twitter account yeah. if you want to go and take a look. But um, basically, the, until there's some, some intelligence back in that organization, they're going to keep posting humorous things yes, on yeah. the website. Yeah. Uh, hacktivism so is, yeah, their, hacktivism. is their motivation. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, it was funny. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, and also, the, uh, while we're on the topic of happy, <laughs> hacking, our, our favorite um, censorship, not censorship, but ratings organization, the Fulman Publications Board, <laughs> they also had their website hacked. And, um, and they, they um, told IT Web that uh, it's been rectified now. Um, and it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there, are, there are still link backs at, in the top of their source code. <laughs> so, yeah, it seems to, it seems to be, uh, it seems to look like that we've got um, our own spate of hackings. Now we just need a non-ZA oh, yeah. to start up. And, uh, Possibly, yeah, I've just uh, been influenced by overseas and seeing that it's available, Activism. you can do it. Activism. Go for it. Oh. It seems to be a uh, real I'm big I'm upswing on the, ha on the, I mean, it was like, it was really big in the 80s, uh, in the 90s. Mm. And then it, it just seems to, it seemed to have disappeared, you know, in 2000, that just disappeared. And now all of a sudden it's back in vogue and it's back on front page of news. I must say, I'm still not sure whether I'm 100% pro it. It's, you know, because if somebody were to hack my website, I would be very unhappy about it. I've had guys, no, no, it's true. And it, you know, it gets, you, sh you sit there and, you know, you've got to then spend hours and hours on doing and then there's the, the, the client side stuff. Now I've got to explain to your client, you know, listen, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's not for lack of security. Uh, I mean, like, yeah. uh, there, there are ways to get into systems. So, yeah. No, it, it's interesting. It's interesting. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, last two stories. Human cloning in Japan. Um, basically, this is the kicker. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it is. The kicker. We actually have two kickers. Oh, okay. The cool. one's picture, so we're just going to talk about it. Oh, both of them are a bit. Um, basically, in Japan, you can now go and get your face cloned and then put onto mannequins and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, I got it completely wrong. I thought they were going to clone people. No, <laughs> not <laughs> yet. Which is Japan, uh, not China. Ah. Um, there's this guy, he gets, you know, you can see he gets a that clone. That is awesome. Uh, he's got his head on a Stormtrooper costume. <laughs> but if you actually go further down, some of the mannequins are quite creepy. That is really awesome. So it awesome. gets that eerie valley uh, level of... Uh, 
That is very cool. I see they use that, what's, uh, it's what they call structured light uh, 3D, map, uh, 3D mapping. So basically what you do is you project a bunch of dots onto a scene, and then as the distance changes, the position of the dots you know, it changes between them. You can pick it up with just a webcam. There's actually some quite cool projects to, uh, that you can hack up your own, um, oh, okay, cool. your own 3D scanner that uses structured light. Uh, the Radiohead video. We, we, the part with, with, that was just his face, mm-hmm. that was done with structured light. Yeah. Not, the, not the laser scanner on the top of the car. Cool. And the last one is just something amusing to go watch. Some photo shows taking some photos of divers as they're going through the air uh, with high-speed cameras and all the very odd faces that, they, that they're <laughs> pulling as they're going down. <laughs> it's rather amusing to watch and, and I can recommend it. Um, <laughs> some of those look quite painful. <laughs> and quite intense. I, I guess Angry I, face. I guess, I guess you have to ready your body for hitting that water. That dude right. from that dude from uh, uh-huh. Lithuania. He's pretty funny. Sorry, Tim. I'm not chasing you. I'm waiting for the page to load. So <laughs> oh, he's going to continue. No, oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Oh, there we go. Wait, wait. <laughs> there's, there's the angry face. <laughs> <laughs> scrolly, scrolly. Nobody can see it. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get better. <laughs> they get better. What are they, all these divers? Yes, it's as they're going, you know, going through the air with high speed cameras. <laughs> yes. I see they're using a. Speaking of coming back to the um, clone your face, I see they're using Z printers. So that's the that they print into a uh, powdered material, mm-hmm. and you can get full color as well. With oh, it, okay. which is so basically, nice. just everything in one go. Anything, everything in one go. The only problem with it is it is. They normally um, a bit delicate. You then do like a impregnate it with resin when you're done to make it hard oh, and okay. more durable. Oh, cool. Um, and with that, we're going to end the show. I just want to th- uh, mention. Uh, go uh, also check I want to. I want to quickly. Th- yeah. Chuck something in. I was at MediaTek last week. Mm-hmm. Um, unbelievable. You can see the guy spent some good money. Um, organizers actually changed the. Uh, you want to give us a little bit of background on MediaTek? Sorry. Uh, MediaTek is basically for the broadcast and production um, industry in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So it's um, your camera providers, it's your studio Ooh, equipment. Very nice. But it's also a lot of music stuff. So they had the outside uh, sound stage. Actually, had four companies um, packed out in a square mm-hmm. facing each other doing um, stage audio sound off, if okay. you want to call it like it. Cool. So it was very good. But there was one camera. The Sony Phantom. Is it pretty? Well, this was talking about high speed camera. This camera shoots for eight seconds only. Yeah. Onto a 64 gig solid stage sure. disc. Then it's full. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At 1,000 frames per second, full HD. So one. So each frame is 120 by 1080. What would you use that for? High speed photography. So the guy actually lit two sparklers in front of the camera. I'm trying to find a photo. This thing is just amazing. Um, uh, Sony Phantom HD. Sorry for searching while we're talking. Um, it, 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 you, 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 you let two sparklers mm-hmm. and was photographing that, but the camera records the whole time onto that solid state, open-ended long, lot, the long blop files. And then when you've decided, okay, well, that's the eight seconds I want, you stop the recording, <laughs> and then you get your eight seconds, 64 <laughs> gigs later. <laughs> now, that camera, there we go. Got a picture of it. Yes. That's the sort of camera you'll use to shoot <laughs> those videos out of the f- previous story. Um, yeah, eight seconds, but yeah, the frame alone is 800,000 rand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, None of these cameras are just... The <laughs> solid state, I mean, if you want to transfer 64 gigs in eight seconds... I mean, 64 gig filled up in eight seconds. It's you're, looking, you're looking at a disk drive. That solid state is apparently... Um, can you expand it? Um, apparently, that's the highest it can go now for that speed. Oh, okay, I would imagine so it's, it's massive. Because that, that, yeah, that, that solid so, state... So that's not the normal 64 gig solid state. That's, those are the high, high speed... It's probably massive. All parallel. I think they're parallel. Yeah. <coughs> there's a, there's yeah. a disk at the top there. But Phantom HD Gold, this is a camera. I mean, that body is 800,000 Rand. That thing is 200,000 Rand. And then the lensing comes on the front, depending on what you're trying to shoot. But 
Yeah, just uh, the show was awesome. There were some nice cameras. There were some nice desks, everything. There's some cool photos of back in the 50s and stuff of them taking high-speed photos of the atomic bomb tests. Oh, okay. You must really go have a look. Just do a quick Google for that. You'll find it quite quickly. And there they're shooting at, if you could run the camera for a second, it's in the millions of frames a second. Um, so they're shooting down to like the nanosecond nanosecond scale events that it's so fast that as the bomb goes off you can see it start going off but the light hasn't reached from the bomb to the desert floor into the camera yet so the desert is all dark and the bomb is starting to go off so the time of flight is is still too long that it hasn't reflected off the desert floor yet to light up the desert it's incredible and it's Beautiful. Like just all plasma and things like I that i think as we it actually showed off. the video in one of our shows like Long, oh, long it might have been a long time ago, yeah. yeah. But speaking of high speed, check it out. It's, mm. it's very Now, cool. the guy did say, listen, there is a one big daddy for this camera that he had at the show, and that one was running 2,000 frames mm. a second. The way they do these is they actually have a whole bunch of cameras, and they just trigger them uh, electrically yeah. uh, in sequence. That's the way you do it. Mm. Old low-tech way. You can't do it any other <laughs> to get it any faster. <laughs> Um, that the reminds me of a series that's on Discovery, actually called Time Warp. Yes, yes. Um, oh, that, that do exactly this. They, they take these these types of cameras and then they shoot all kinds of stuff but from skateboarding got, to explosions. They've got some interesting cameras. They do, go up to twenty thousand frames a second. Yeah, some of those cameras. That's incredible. Okay, fried road kill. Obviously, you've got a photography back background. Yes, lighting is a big issue with yes, these cameras. Is. Um, you need you need light. You if need you lots of light. If you watch that time warp, I mean, it's it's so bright under the light under when it, just before they're testing, it's so bright that um, the normal um, the normal cameras that they're filming it with are whited out. I mean, it's just glitter. saturated. No, no, no. This high speed cameras, it's actually the other way around. You need the subject to be more lit. That's what I'm saying. The normal camera, so what they're filming the show with, is black. Is whited out. It's so bright. It no. just looks white. Other way around. This, these cameras at these high speeds, you need a lot more li lit. That's what I'm saying. So your picture are, is is no. If they don't black. adjust no, no. the okay. if what they don't adjust, it's adjust it's adjusted for the high speed camera. So the slow cameras yeah. are saturated no, with the no, light. No, 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 no. Okay, no? listen. What I'm saying is okay. The yes. high speed cameras are, have to have such bright light that they if they yes. don't on the okay. normal cameras when they turn those bright yes. lights yes. on Sorry. everything just goes white because the, yes. the 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 aperture they haven't adjusted the apertures and they haven't adjusted the shutter speeds and You're stuff right. yet yes. cool. yeah so Sorry. everything's just yeah. white you need a lot more light to shoot at these speeds yes, yes. that's that's the bottom line yeah. and on that light <laughs> <note. laughs> uh, I just I just want to mention some things uh, go check uh, last night's Leicester Sport they had <laughs> yes, Malcolm play Ferreira <laughs> play 23, 23 on yeah. It is really, really good. It was uh, hilarious. I'm not a big sports person, and I love that show. <laughs> it really was worth watching. Did you actually have to go and edit some of the audio? I did, uh, we can ask Harriet. Because I some of it did. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a bit risque, so just be careful. But it is really worth going to go watch. So go, so go check it out. It's very good. Um, yes, and then tomorrow night is Alti Afrikaans. Yes, and we're going to have a guest on. We'll see how that goes. Who's the guest? Um, Paul Els. He's a writer of some military books. Oh, cool. Uh, we're going to chat. He's actually busy with a book about Fertrika Wurt at the moment. So Any books that I might have read? Uh, Fear Not But God, Ochi Barangu. It's all about the old bush wars. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fear Not But God specifically was about the old Reiki Corps, I think. Well, up to for going through the bush war, war yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. That's one thing that there's very little history being written on, hey? Well, there is. There um, is. It's out there, but it's difficult to access. I mean, you go look at World War II history, right? Yes. You can find resources on it. Into you any see if he's going to be putting on Amazon as ebooks. Well, the thing is, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll rather go into the stories tomorrow. But yeah, I mean, no, 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 his no, heart true. was crying when one of his copies sold on eBay for hundred pounds. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> so they are. The problem is just that most of these writers haven't embraced electronic medium yes, yet. Yeah. Yeah, I so, know, uh, but also I'm saying the history is not in electronic format. It's yes. very difficult to go. If you look at a Wikipedia article on it, it's you know it's one page. Yeah. World War Two. They've got an entire section. On, I mean, there's a whole section on Wikipedia, right down to individual battles that were fought. It's just difficult to access that information. So, yeah, it's yeah. Lot of people and all the rest of it. But I've been watching what's it, Grenzurlog, and it's quite good as a documentary series. It's pretty good. A um, lot of politics and things, but they but that was the war. That was mm. it was, which is really good. That's the interesting part. It's a lot of the politics that you didn't really know about. And they also take it, they at least do look at both sides of the story as well, which is quite interesting. So mm. they speak to the 
um, the terrorists and um, things like that. So yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a good series. Mm. If you, but it's savor savor Afrikaans, <laughs> very <laughs> savor Afrikaans. All right. Okay. <laughs> With that, we're going to end the show. Just want to thank uh, Stuart. You can get him at Stu underscore ZA or my blog, StuartAllen.org. Cool. Jan from Ellen, you can get him at Staff Right on my broadband <laughs> or on Twitter at, at Jan VZA. Feel free to flame me on Twitter with everything that you hate uh, about Staff Right. Jan Els, blog. Two Els. That's right. correct. Cool. That's correct. And you can also get him on Twitter at uh, Johan underscore Els. That's me. Uh, myself, Tim Hawk. You can get me at, at Tim underscore Els. Uh, These strap uh, lines are challenging. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> also, if you like the show, uh, likes on Facebook, uh, join at Let's Talk Network or at Let's Talk Geek. Yeah, uh, and tell your friends about us. Yeah, and or on the and subscribe to the YouTube. I guess you can YouTube. And please, your RSS feeds. While like you're going comments. on lunch, just watch one of the shows. Yeah, we need yeah. the hits, please. Just <laughs> so if even if you've seen it, just watch it again and just go on lunch. And it's worth mentioning that on the YouTube channel, it's it's not always just the shows that go up there. there on occasion, there are things like uh, an Asus Transformer review, like yes. the interviews done at Icon, on, yeah. um, that that go up there that aren't broadcast on live streams like this. So so uh, yeah, it's worth checking out um, for that type of content. Cool. Thank you very much for listening. Thank yeah. you. Cheers, everyone. Good night. Cheers.